I've been talking for a while now on this channel about Tesla's new gigacast things. However, a new patent from Tesla goes into an interesting detail here to show just how these castings are very different to what the automotive industry currently does. Here is some interesting information on the giga castings that you may not have heard about. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to the new subscribers on the channel. Welcome back to everyone else. Hello, everyone. Great to see you all. Fantastic to have you here. And you know what? I have been talking about the giga castings for a while now, but I honestly didn't know this information. There's a new patent that's come out from Tesla recently, which has brought to light some interesting differences between Tesla's current castings or between their chassis versus current car chassis. Now, apparently they actually act very differently under load, under pressure, so under a crash. So they had to be recertified. And I think that is one of the key reasons why Gigafactory Texas and maybe even Berlin have taken longer than expected for production to actually be officially approved. Obviously they are producing vehicles, but to get official approval to deliver those vehicles to customers, it's taken longer than we all thought. This might be the reason. One interesting feature reports Talk News is in the Tesla Model Y, which is currently being produced at Gigafactory Austin, Texas and Gigafactory Berlin, is that the chassis is created from two large castings. Now, this patent actually describes the technology that's applied to the new deformation zones. As you know, Tesla is very close. They are ramping up currently production of the Model Y at both Gigafactories, Texas and Austin. One of the many interesting features in the production lines will be using these gigantic machines that allow faster and more efficient creation of two key parts, faster and more efficient. In other words, Tesla is still continuing to drive down cost of building vehicles. Very important when you talk about margins and being able to dominate the industry. Now, these two parts are the front and the rear subframes, which will replace the more than 70 welded parts that are currently used. Tesla has filed a patent in which it describes the technology used for the deformation zones completely new and which forced the company to recertify the Model Y in regular crash tests because it apparently actually reacts differently. Now, before I get to the patent and what that means, two years ago, Musk said Tesla would revolutionize the way cars are being made by introducing large castings created from gigantic machines into the process. Now, the funny thing is that Six different car companies, Volvo, and five other Chinese car companies have actually adopted this process as well to varying degrees. We don't know exactly to what degrees, but we know that six different companies have ordered Giga castings from Hydra in Italy, the same company that makes these castings for Tesla, but none of them are Legacy Auto. Legacy Auto has completely ignored this new and I believe extremely important innovation. I, I'm baffled that they've ignored it. So as I was saying, by introducing large castings created from gigantic machines into the process, instead of welding sheets of metal together to make the front and the rear parts of the body, Tesla casts them in one piece, simplifying the entire process and removing a lot of cost, plus making it more structurally rigid, plus making it lighter. Lots of big advantages here. Now, what Elon didn't say at the time was how this new structure would behave in the event of an accident. The new technology is more complicated to execute than previously thought, because it's so different to what's currently being used. That means that the Model Y has to be recertified. According to what Musk said via Twitter back in 2020, the Berlin Gigafactory would be the first to use this new manufacturing process. However, Fremont and Giga Shanghai will add these processes to their lines once the technology was perfected at the Gigafactory in Germany. However, now the Texas Gigafactory has announced it will also use those mega castings to create the Model Y chassis. If you've been watching my channel, you would have seen videos showing that actually happening at the factory. Now, Talk News says that new manufacturing technology is a real challenge for engineering as regarding the deformation absorption zones, since the castings don't behave like normal welded pieces would. The patent filed in July of 2021 by Tesla called Integrated Energy Absorption Foundries has come to light today for anyone interested in having a look. The documentation accompanying the patent acknowledges that the new chassis parts are not as simple as they might have seemed at first, their behavior is completely different in the event of an accident. To meet the established safety requirements, Tesla has to design special structures for the proper functioning of the controlled deformation zones. In other words, the car has to deform in a certain way in the event of a crash for it to be roadworthy. Unlike regular stampings, 
These large parts absorb energy causing creeping deformations and progressive fractures into the casting. During the crash, the fractures start on the outside and spread to the inside of the vehicle. Progressive crushing ensures robust and repeatable crash performance. In addition, the fracture operation also means that after a minor crash, the car can more easily be repaired simply by replacing the cast structures. In order to make these large castings, Tesla has installed in both Austin and Berlin, the factories have brought in eight huge machines called gigapresses. Each one takes only about 60 watt to 120 seconds to create each part. This saves Tesla heaps of time. And of course, these other new car companies that are adopting this process will be saving a lot of time as well. This will dramatically simplify the Model Y production process, make it more affordable, quicker, and make it simply better. There's less opportunity for failure by having only two pieces instead of 70. In addition, by combining it with a new structural battery pack made up of 4680 cells, the rigidity of the battery pack is increased and protection is again reinforced when an accident happens. Now, to be fully correct, the patent actually documents the new Model Y chassis contains three major pieces and two castings. Now, to be technically correct, the document actually outlines that there are three major pieces. Two of those are the castings, and the third is the 4680 base structural battery pack. So for the chassis, they need three pieces, which is still very different and much lighter and much better than their current way of actually making this car, and the current way that pretty much all cars are manufactured across the automotive industry. I personally believe that at some point in time, this will become the industry standard, probably before 2030. The reason being is that I think that the advantages will be pointed out by journalists. They'll be like, these cars are lighter, you know, they feel more rigid and they're, well, Tesla's making more profit. So I think that realistically, in order to compete with Tesla, Legacy Auto will have to start adopting these processes in their production lines, but this could take them many years. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Would you prefer a Tesla vehicle with the structural pack or without it? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. You're going to say with it, but let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.